Quality nine. What do you mean when you say divine truth does not hurt anyone or anything? <laughs> yes, well, it, this is common belief on the planet, isn't there, that the truth hurts. Um, yeah. It's in songs. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, most people believe it, actually. Most people choose to not have truth because they believe truth hurts. Mm -hmm. And in fact, many people are willing to live lives for the majority of their existence on earth where they don't know the truth about most things. They feel that ignorance is bliss. Yeah. Ignorance is painful, actually. And God's truth is that ignorance is painful and, and certainly not bliss. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so the reality is that God's truth cannot hurt anybody or anything. And the reason why it cannot is because it is the absolute truth of the universe and it's all based around love. Yeah. So it's always loving. Mm -hmm. So it's impossible to hurt anything or anyone with God's truth. Mm -hmm. God's truth is, is of such a nature that, that it always brings more love into the situation. Always. It always brings more acknowledgement of law into the situation. It always brings more truth into the situation. That's the way God's truth is. Yeah. Human truth is often in denial of God's law, in denial of the truth. We want to retain an opinion of our own, which we want to believe is true, but which is actually damaging our existence. Human truth, so-called, when it's out of harmony with God's truth, is actually damaging our happiness. It's hurting us. Mm. And this is the thing we need to come to see, that the real thing that hurts is not knowing the truth, but the error that existed before the truth was known. Yeah. And this is why it's so important for us to have a desire to discover more truth. Because if we discover more truth, we will have the potential of feeling less hurt mm -hmm. in our future. If we continue to hold on to errors and therefore hold on to the untruth, what we do is we are now, through the law, there's a laws involved with all of this, encouraging more hurt. Yeah. We're actually bringing more hurt to us by holding on to the error. And I see that this is a big problem as well, that we, we are frequently believing that the truth hurts when the truth does not hurt at all. Mm -hmm. And it's the error that hurts us constantly that we live in almost constantly. And when it gets exposed, of course it hurts. Yeah. And we are unwilling generally to go through the process of the exposure of the hurt. Mm. So we, what finishes up happening is we suppress the hurt, suppress the hurt, suppress the hurt, and we think that not knowing the truth will help us suppress the hurt. But the hurt is having a terrible detrimental effect to our body, to our emotions, to our life, to our attractions, what we attract into our life, and even the detrimental effect in our relationships and particularly our relationship with God. And yet we want to hold on to the hurt. Mm. We're not seeing the truth of what creates hurt. What creates hurt isn't truth, it's error. Mm. And that's the thing we need to understand. So really you're saying it's error, it's lies, it's deceit. All of these things create our hurt. Yes. And sometimes people want to deny those things and they think that's ignorance and that's blissful. Yes. But actually eventually the truth will come along and expose those things. Yes. And it's not the truth that's hurting in those times. It's just the exposure of what already existed, which was deceit, lies, lies. error, yeah. false beliefs, false those beliefs. kinds of things. Yeah. Exactly. And in fact, when a person arrives in the spirit world many times, they realise that the bliss they thought was ignorance <laughs> yeah. is no longer bliss. Because, sorry, because um, all of God's truth is, all of God's laws are actually designed to bring us truth, aren't they? So exactly. Even if we control our environment enough while we're here in our physical body, as soon as we enter the spirit world, we're going to be confronted with truth, aren't we? Yes, yeah. but it's not only because of that. Yeah. There, are many, uh, uh, there are many reasons why a person, once they hit the spirit world, realises that ignorance was not bliss. Mm -hmm. They arrive in the spirit world in usually a terrible condition with a lot of pain associated with it. And now they become completely conscious of their pain and as a result, they, and, and they realise that a lot of their pain was the result of their choice to be ignorant. They also find that, th that their choice to be ignorant means that they don't understand where they're now living. Mm. And that causes huge amounts of confusion and f further pain. Mm. 
because they no longer understand the location in which they're living or why they're living in that location and what caused them to be in that location. They don't understand how the universe works and so they don't know how to get out of the location that they're living in. And so the bliss that they thought was created by the ignorance is not created and in fact the opposite has been created and that is more pain and suffering gets created through ignorance. And you can see the reality of this in our physical life quite easily. Whenever we are ignorant of physical things. So for example, the average person on earth you know, hundreds of years ago was ignorant to the fact that there was such a thing as germs. Yeah. And so what we used to do is things like go to the toilet and eat straight after without washing our hands. You know, that was something we were ignorant of. Now, the average person might have smelt their hands and go, well, that's not very nice, right? And, uh, and done something about it for that reason. But they would not have been particularly concerned about, you know, the fact that there might be damaging effects of those particular germs. Now, the ignorance of that caused their behaviour to be such that they allowed themselves to live in what we would call unsanitary conditions. Yeah. Not understanding that the unsanitary condition caused the multiplication of diseases and viruses and bacteria, which then affected their own life and eventually, and for many, caused their death mm -hmm. and therefore the separation from their current life. Now, in that small physical example, we can see the ignorance to the fact that there are microscopic organisms that can cause our harm and the reason for their creation, which is all to do with our own unsanitary behaviour, wasn't known or understood and so therefore resulted in a large number of deaths. Once we start to understand that, it started to reduce the number of deaths involved with that kind of behaviour because we started to behave differently. It modified our behaviour. And this is the beauty of truth, is that it starts to modify our behaviour. It reduces the hurt. Now that we understand what is the cause between, you know, so we now have a cause and effect relationship. Mm -hmm. We see the effect is the death of for unknown causes. The cause was eventually known in the sense that it was caused by unsanitary behaviour and conditions. Once we correct the unsanitary behaviour and conditions, all of a sudden, we have an improvement in the way and in how many people die. And therefore, we see this relationship. Yep. The truth gave us more freedom, a longer life, a longer lifespan generally, and also less trauma in death yeah. uh, as a result of not, have, not dying from conditions that were dramatically caused by viruses or bacteria or other kinds of organisms that could harm us. Mm -hmm. So how could you then say the truth hurt? Yeah. The truth did not hurt. It was remaining in the ignorant error-based position that hurt. Yeah. And this applies physically, emotionally, spiritually, with all issues in the universe. Yeah. So every single physical scientific issue in the universe will benefit from us knowing more truth about it. Mm. Every single emotional thing that we need to discover will benefit by us knowing more truth about it. Every single spiritual thing in our future life will benefit by us knowing more truth about it. The truth doesn't hurt us. It helps us. It makes us happy. Yeah. It's the error and holding on to the error-based position that hurts us. Mm. Can I um, put to you a few examples from the notes here? Sure. You've said not being open and telling the whole truth always results in more harm and pain to the soul. And that's sort of relating to what you're saying there, isn't it? Well, it not only results in more pain to the soul, but as a subsequent result, more pain to the physical body and the spiritual bodies that are connected to the soul. Yes. So it, by withholding the truth and not telling it in any case, if we know it and we don't tell it, all we're doing is creating more pain and suffering for ourselves mm -hmm. and more pain and suffering for anybody who heard our lie yeah. or could have benefited from the truth that we withheld. Yeah. And, and if you think about it, we wouldn't take such actions if we didn't believe that the truth hurt. We, if, we, if we thought to ourselves, oh, the truth never hurts, we'd go, I'm not hurting anybody. I can go and tell them <laughs> whatever I want. You know, that's truthful and I'm not hurting. But, but also I would understand 
telling a person something that is not demonstrated to be true and not proven to be true can be a dangerous thing. And unless I preface that with, I don't know, or this is my personal opinion, mm -hmm. I'm creating some fictitious truth which the person may then act upon and do something with. Yeah. Now, if people do something because of your personal opinion, well, that, that's okay. That's their personal choice. You've stated up to the front that that's your personal opinion and that's okay. But if people do something because you're telling them it's the definite God's truth yeah. and yet it's not, and then they take actions that they will be harmed by in the future, then a lot of that pain is going to be on your head personally as well on through the soul, laws, really. on your soul. Yeah. And, and you're going to feel the pain of that as well. So it's a very dangerous thing to tell people so-called ideas or concepts that you do not know are true and you need to understand that it's dangerous and also tell people, no, this is my personal opinion. This is not what I know for certain. Mm. Right? So there's a lot of things that are my personal opinion that I don't know for certain and when people ask me my personal opinion, I tell them mm -hmm. because they've asked. But I tell them, this is my personal opinion. I don't know that for certain. Yeah. When I know something for certain, I say, no, this is God's truth that I have discovered through experience and I know that for certain. And then I tell them those particular things. And I know I can do so with no fear of them ever being hurt by it. Yeah. Because I know that God's truth always results in less hurt. Yeah. It always results in more power to the individual and to us collectively. Mm -hmm. It al always results in more love being on the planet. It always results in a happier existence. Yeah, 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 yeah it's beautiful. All right, um, some other examples now just about emotional pain. Mm -hmm. So you've got here, if we reject truth because of potential pain, we are choosing to remain in emotional error. Mm -hmm. So you've already sort of covered that, haven't you? Yes, what we're really saying to ourselves in that place is that the truth causes pain. Mm. That's really what we're saying. So if we reject truth because we're afraid that we'll have to feel some pain, we're really saying that it's the truth that caused my pain. Yeah. And we see this happening all the time, don't we, in our seminars Definitely. and stuff. When people come up and say, what's the truth about this? You start telling them and they go, I don't want to know. You know, <laughs> you can feel in them they don't want to know. That is their belief, their false belief that the truth hurts. Mm -hmm. Coming to the fore, it's an emotion that they have, that the truth does hurt. It's yeah. not the truth that hurts, it's the error that the truth exposes that's hurting them. And they need to be willing to experience the error and the emotions associated with the error if yeah. they're going to ever be free of it. Now, most people are not willing to go through that. They want to hear a truth without ever having it be absorbed in their heart. They believe that they can force it into their heart while the error still remains mm. in their heart. It's not possible. It's just a not, not possible thing. And there, there's another fundamental principle of divine truth which we'll look at later, which actually says it's not possible. Yeah. But it's not possible and every time they attempt to do it, they're basically reinforcing their own belief system that the truth hurts. Yeah. And they become afraid of the truth. Yeah. Which is also an indication, as from our previous discussion, that fear is not in harmony with God's truth either. Yeah. So that's an indication that there's something wrong. Mm. Every time we feel afraid of truth, there's got to be something wrong with our belief system about truth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And some of those things would be, uh, well, we often feel the emotional pain of truth entering us because we believe error, which hurts to release. Can I say that we don't feel the emotional pain of truth entering us because there is no emotional mm. pain associated with truth entering us. There's only emotional pain associated with error leaving us. Mm -hmm. When somebody tells us the truth, it exposes the error and we start to feel it. That means we're starting, it's starting to leave us. Yeah. Once we start to feel it, it's leaving us and therefore we will have some pain. Now, usually the two events are very closely aligned with each other. Yeah. Somebody tells us the truth and the emotional train is instantly triggered. And if we allow it, we start receiving, feeling the error. Mm -hmm. But if we don't allow it, we'll start believing that the truth caused our pain, our pain. which yeah. is not true because it's impossible for truth to cause our pain. And that really indicates that we want to hold on to our pain, doesn't it? Or we our do. error. We do. We're saying, 
no more truth because I don't want this, I want to hold on to this rather than experience it. Yes, and the yeah. main reason why a person wants to hold on to error is because they're unwilling to go through the emotional process mm -hmm. of releasing the error. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a point of personal unwillingness. It's got nothing to do with the truth hurting. Yeah. It's a point of their personal resistance that they have to letting the error leave them. Mm -hmm. So, if we release emotional error, hearing divine truth will only bring us peace, happiness and bliss. Yes. So once we get to the point where we release the error on a certain subject, on a certain matter, we can absorb all sorts of divine truths about that particular subject without any resistance anymore. Mm -hmm. There's no pain associated with it either anymore because the error which caused the pain has gone yeah. because we chose to experience it. Yeah. So if we use some examples there yeah. of a partner telling... Maybe we can use the examples in our next session. Sure, yeah, sure, session. absolutely. I've put them in the wrong yeah, sequence that's, there. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. All right, the final thing you have written here mm -hmm. is that there are emotional penalties for wanting to believe lies in order to avoid emotional pain. Yes. And perhaps that's quite the dramatic thing to end our discussion on. Yes. <laughs> Many times we want to believe the lie. The main reason why we want to believe a lie is because we are trying to avoid some emotional pain of what will happen when we have to accept the truth. Mm -hmm. And the emotional pain is a result of the error leaving us, that we don't want to leave us. Yeah. And so what we do is we manage it. And the way we manage it is we choose to continue to believe the lie in order to avoid the emotional pain mm -hmm. of the error leaving us. Mm -hmm. And this is a terrible thing that happens with, the, with belief systems, religious belief systems, scientific belief systems, uh, political belief systems, and all sorts of belief systems on the planet, even down right down to belief systems about our personal emotions. We are constantly trying to manage the pain within us without releasing it. Yeah. This is a major flaw in our desire. We need to understand we, we will not be able to manage our emotional pain eventually mm -hmm. because in our emotional pain we make choices that then cause us to attract more emotional pain and therefore more error. And the more this cycle continues, the error will build to such a point that we'll have a huge amount of pain to yeah. experience. And it would be very, very difficult for us to experience it. There are many people who have lived for thousands of years in the spirit world now who have yet to engage the process of experiencing their emotional pain because their emotional pain is so great because of their choices mm -hmm. to avoid. Mm -hmm. Now, truth will help this process. Yeah. And so it is very important for us to understand we need to let the truth do its work. Yeah. And the truth will bring us happiness. Mm. So you're really saying that when we make the choice to believe lies, not only are we leaving the emotional pain or that's already existing within us unexposed and therefore unable to be healed, mm -hmm. but we're actually accruing more emotional pain. Of course, because we're making choices based on ignorance, which means we're breaking many of God's truths or God's laws. When we break many of God's laws, there is the subsequent effect of those laws telling us we've broken them, that there is some kind of result for breaking them that increases the amount of pain that we're in to show us that we're actually making choices that are out of harmony with love, out of harmony with truth. So there's this cycle that occurs that, that continues to build up to touch an intensity that we no longer want to make any choices yeah. that are out of harmony with love. Yeah. That's the purpose of the system. Yeah. But many of us take many, many years to get to that point because we detune from the emotional experience of the pain. We're trying to avoid the pain constantly. If we were very sensitive to the pain and allowed the experience of the pain, it's highly unlikely we would make another choice which would result in more pain. Mm -hmm. So, so it, there is a benefit to allowing ourselves to become more sensitive to the emotional pain that's caused by error, not by truth. Yeah. We need to allow ourselves to benefit by being more sensitive to the emotional pain allowing ourselves to experience the emotional pain, which is the result of the error that's within us that needs to exit us somehow, it needs to get out of us somehow. And once that happens, 
when the truth comes to us, it will be like, ah, oh, it's just a breath of fresh air. It's beautiful, you know. It's, it creates happiness. Yeah. We won't be resistive to it under those circumstances. Mm. Our resistance to truth is driven by our fear of experiencing our emotional pain. Yeah. Now, if we really understood God's principles here, we'd understand that fear results in, a, in, in more pain. Yeah. We'd understand that fear is in opposition to God's truth. Yeah. And we'd understand that hurt is in opposition to God's truth, but both need to be experienced in order to be released. Yeah, my God's helped me with something recently uh, where I was feeling quite stuck around a certain group of fears and certain issues in our relationship. And they said to me, well, just you're feeling stuck around these emotions, but if you just keep desiring truth, speaking truth, um, wanting truthful interactions your emotions will be exposed. You won't have to worry about this issue anymore. No. And I can vouch for that. That yeah. definitely has worked mm. um, to get me over this hump where I just felt very stagnant. Uh, just even praying to be open or praying for to receive more truth and making the commitment to just being absolutely truthful, even about my error-based position with myself and with others mm. really helped me to begin to release some of these errors. Yes. Yeah. After a while, we start seeing that all of our resistance is caused by our fear of pain, yeah. whether that pain be physical or emotional. Yeah. All, and, and fear is not the result of God's truth. And pain is also not the result of God's truth. No. Both are results of errors being expressed as truth, yeah. errors that we believe are true but are not. And if we embrace this process of desiring truth, the errors begin to lead us and we do begin to experience more peace, more direction, more desire, more exactly. happiness. Exactly. Yeah. Even yeah. just uh, acknowledging the truth that you're under attack or acknowledging the truth that there's a potential of violence towards yourself and acknowledge, have a, has a freeing effect upon the person, not, not a sla enslaving effect. Yes. So often the things, the truths that we're trying to deny are actually... If we, if we accepted them, would actually free us from the fear and free us from the hurt. Yeah. Which is, which is a, a, so I see it as a sad thing that the majority of people still do not understand this relationship between pain and error. Mm. They believe pain belongs to truth, yeah. not to error. Yeah, it's sad. And that's very sad because pain does not belong to truth. They also believe fear belongs to truth. That's why they want to remain ignorant. Fear does not belong to truth either. No. And these are things that we need to come to understand. Yeah. Mm.